NAD pathway is a pathway within all of our cells. This is a pathway that is highly active in young animals and humans. All animals and humans across the entire lifespan make NAD in their cells. It's related to cellular energetics, that is the production of energy in cells. When I take NR and NMN at the dosages I talked about a little bit earlier, it gives me a lot of sustained mental and physical energy throughout the day. Hey folks, I'm Marcel and you are watching The Pulse. Today I want to discuss a neuroscientist at Stanford, Andrew Huberman. Now, many of you have heard of Andrew Huberman. He's 48 years old. Many of you may not be aware that he also takes NMN and a form of resveratrol, among some other supplements that I also take. So I thought it'd be a good time to sort of point out why Andrew Huberman, uh, who is an expert in the field of neuroscience, as I said, at Stanford University, and he has interviewed people like Dr. Sinclair, people like Peter Atia. He is very well connected to the field of health and longevity. And the fact that he takes NAD boosters, I find quite interesting. And the reasoning behind him taking them is very similar, very closely aligned with the reasons that I take them as well. So he says... He believes not all nutrient demands for supporting overall health and well-being can be met through diet alone. Um, I find that very fascinating because it's something I've suggested here many times just from, again, a common sense perspective. Does the modern food supply represent enough opportunity for proper nutrition for health and well-being and disease prevention? And I don't think it does, and I think supplementing with some natural supplements is a good thing to do. Of course, you should do the diet, exercise, and sleep behaviors that he talks about a lot and I talk about here. But in addition to that, I think finding a supplement protocol that works for you can be very useful and can be very healthy. He takes supplements to maintain his energy and testosterone levels, and he takes some to improve his sleep and mental acuity or mental sharpness. Now, specifically, why does he take NMN? And he gets into this. He doesn't do it for life extension purposes. I am just going to add a little footnote to the end of this video about that topic because I find it very interesting, and I don't think he would necessarily disagree with my points. I just want to add a little afterthought because I agree with him that there's no evidence that shows that you're going to get life extension from resveratrol or NMN. But why does he take it? He takes it for the energy and focus increase, which he describes as quite significant. He takes it earlier in the day, in fact, within about 30 minutes or two hours before he eats, which is 11 a.m. This is usually the minimum amount of time I give myself to wake up before I start eating. He doesn't take it later in the day. I do take some NMN in the afternoon, but not too late in the day either because it can interfere with his sleep, which I've also experienced if I take it like past 5 p.m. I can start to have some sleep issues as well. Interestingly, he did stop NMN, and by the way, he also takes NR, which I'll talk about in a moment too, but mostly he takes one to two grams of that NMN and some NR every day as well. But he did stop taking NAD boosters and felt the decrease in energy and focus. I also went through that a couple times, quitting NMN for five days, and each day I got a little more slow. So I do stay with it, and he stays with it as well. So I'll take any resveratrol in the form of grapeseed oil. Now he talks about the reasoning behind this, that there is research showing vascular and blood flow benefits. He doesn't list it as a top 10 supplement in his stack, but he does take it every day. My story with resveratrol is kind of interesting because I took it for a year without adding any other supplements and I was experiencing less inflammation. I lost some weight. I was able to exercise more. Maybe that was because of the blood blood flow, delivering nutrients, and sort of helping my muscles recover. Very interesting stuff. I think he states some great reasons and some great arguments for resveratrol. Where it got confusing, which he states is initially it was sold and talked about as a life extension supplement. I never bought into that. I came into this resveratrol taking experience after all that had blown over, but he still takes it. Knowing what he knows now, I still take it as well. I still do well with it. I stopped for three weeks one time, and I didn't feel as good as I did 
when I was taking it. So I, I continue taking resveratrol. I'm currently taking about 500 milligrams a day. He takes 400 to 800 milligrams of grapeseed oil, which is very high in resveratrol. He takes that every day. The other things that we both take are zinc, magnesium in the form of L3 on 8, and he takes that form of it because it can penetrate the blood-brain barrier, and this can lead to better mental health. This is the form of magnesium in the product that do not age cells with vitamin D, which he also takes, vitamin K, which he didn't list as taking. These two have been shown to synergize together by a study that was done on dementia and prevention of dementia in Canada that came out last year. So that's one area that I differ a little bit from him, but he does take magnesium L3 on 8, and he does take vitamin D. You can take those together with vitamin K, again, from do not age Use my code to pulse, save that 10%, and support my efforts here in this channel. He also takes apigenin. The Mayo Clinic did find that mice experienced a longer lifespan when they had inhibited their CD38 levels, which apigenin can do. So it sort of does suggest that you might live a little bit longer if you're taking apigenin. It's a healthy supplement. All of these, by the way, have great safety records. He takes omega-3. He takes a gram of that a day. He says you could take it as a supplement or from fatty fish or a combination of both, and that it can lead to brain health as well. Interesting coming from a neuroscientist. He's very focused on mental health. Creatine he takes, yes, for the muscular benefits, but also for the mental strength benefits, which is interesting. I did start taking creatine again. We're in springtime now, and I'm much more active. I don't like taking it when I'm less active, for whatever that's worth. Our similar philosophies are in the areas of diet, exercise, and sleep. And he says, and I always say, make sure you're doing those first and foremost then supplement from there. Alan Graves, CEO of Do Not Age, calls these the free stuff, and you should certainly do the free stuff. It just makes sense. Now, some differences, and I wouldn't even call these necessarily differences of opinion, but where we deviate a little bit in our approach, one thing that came to light that I mentioned is sunlight. And sunlight is very healthy, and I find in the springtime, I derive an energy boost getting out there in the sun. If it's over 60 and the sun's out a bit, I do take my jacket off. I like getting that exposure. It just feels good on my arms. If it's 60 or warmer, I'll play tennis in shorts, and I find that I get physically a nice boost from that sunlight exposure. Again, wear sunscreen. Maybe that's why people don't talk about natural sunlight exposure too much because there are some dangers associated with overexposure. Just be careful there. Vitamin K is something that I do take, as I mentioned. I also would probably differ with him and quiz him if I could talk to him about physetin, quercetin, CAAKG, and CERT6 activator, which I find safe and healthy to take. And uh, matter of fact, I just increased my CAKG to three times per day, 400 milligrams, because it is so safe and I feel so great when I do take it. Now, I want to talk for a moment about life extension. Currently, I don't think we can extend lifespan with supplements or any current drugs or technology necessarily. However, if you can prevent some life-threatening diseases or postpone their onset, isn't that a form of life extension? And then I would also say if NAD boosters offer you increased energy and focus, isn't that a form of quality of life extension, which I think is very important. So I'm certain that Scientists like David Seclair have oversold life extension capabilities of supplements, and that's where he's gotten himself into a bind at times. He really wants to make aging classified as a disease, and I think that has probably fueled his desire to make some of these aging treatment supplements as drugs, but definitely he and I differ in that respect. But I do find it very fascinating that Andrew Huberman continues to take NED boosters for the reasons that I also take them and many others take them, finds them to be very beneficial. Now he's 48. There are some 30-year-old doctors who have gone online recently and posted some anti-NED boosting information. It is fascinating how your perspective changes when you reach your 40s, 50s, 
50s and beyond. And I wouldn't recommend to most 30-year-olds, unless you have an NAD deficiency specifically, to take NAD boosters. I don't think it makes a lot of sense in your 20s and 30s. But when you get to Andrew Huberman's age of 48, and you get to my age of 59, and you start to experience a natural decline in your effectiveness and your capabilities to have energy and fitness and awareness, and really athletic abilities and recovery from sports, that kind of thing. I think it is important. I think it can be highly beneficial. Matter of fact, for me, it definitely has been to NAD boost and take some other healthy supplements. So I wanted to share Andrew Huberman's perspective on this, why he takes NMN and other things, and hopefully that's been beneficial to some of you out there. Thanks for watching. Please do subscribe, and I'll see you again soon.